Hey, I'm Kev K. I'm a Skull. Welcome back to MotoGP 18. Has Mayo was shocking last time out. Only grabbing a third place. What a terrible result. Can he get back on form around the Magello circuit in Italy? So here goes McDonald then for the first of three possible laps in quarterfinals. Go across the line and have to beat Kinets 158.2. Run this very fast and flurrying and challenging Madero circuit. The most challenging aspect already. Trying to avoid all the riders coming out of the pits. He's going to that first corner. Can break so deep, deeper than you think you can. Look at McDonald using that rear to get the bike around, using that torque. Let's see how well he's done in the first set, though. Did he lose too much time? Oh, of course he didn't. He goes a bit wide into the left. Has to compromise himself for the right. You've got to be hard on the power. You barely lift around here. On the Moto 3 bike. Let's go downhill. To the right and through the left. Make sure you don't go too wide. That was a very good corner for Mario last season. And then we go through the right hand. Again, you can get on the power so early. That corner. You're barely lifting. For the next right as well. And then into the slowest chicane on the circuit. And all the way down to first. You can see Mario a bit out of line. And touching the brakes as well. Don't want to be doing that. Losing some time. And breaking down now into the right hander. Just got to be so patient with that throttle. And through the fast chicane. This should be easy for that. Oh, look at that beautiful line. 2.2 up apparently for Mario. Let's head into the final corner. Gonna break slightly earlier. You think you can, and he got in the power way early. As he go downhill, he's got some slit stream as well. You're making it easy for him. As he heads towards, he's gonna be smashing the opposition. Look at this, 56 flat. So I'm not saying concentrating on the engine upgrades has worked out for Mario. It's annihilated the opposition. Kinet in second, Martin third. Bezeki leads the second row in home turf ahead of DJ and Antonio Rodrigo upsetting the All-Italian second row. Vantanelli leading the third row ahead of Ramirez and Mino, a former winner around here in Moto3. With Otto rounding out the top ten and leading the fourth row ahead of Arbolono. And Kornfeld, great result for the young Italian in 11th. Then Bezeki leads the fear for ahead of Arenas and Mesa. I mean, look at that. He's almost four seconds back of his teammate. There's Azuki on the seat for ahead of De La Porta and Sasaki. And De La Porta is over four seconds behind his teammate. Two by ahead of Loy and Binder. Then you've got Lopez, Nura Din on the eighth row alongside McPhee. Tyra leads the ninth for ahead of Bulliger and Mazaki. Open to score some home points. The VR46 rider, but along with his teammate Foggy, he's right at the back. As you've got Yachenko in last. Can anybody get close to Mario in the race? So here's Mario revving up at the start. Look at the yellow fever as it get underway for six laps. Found this Italian circuit. And look at this, Mario doesn't even fall back at the start. That's how dominant he is around here. Can cruise over, trying to box out Kinet and Martin in towards the first corner as they go three wide. Of course, Mayo breaks the deepest of them all. He's got the wide eye in that first combat, which comes the inside for the left-hander, though. Just drags those brakes. And that first left, and it gets hard and power out the right as Foggia. And the tie rider battling over 24. Good start for Foggia. Oh, beautifully into the apex for Mayo's Kinet. Already four tenths about. Yachenko the Bulliger for 27th. All the battling is going to be happening behind, isn't it? Mario is looking inch perfect already. There's Yachenko ahead of McPhee. We do have six laps here, so you never know. Tyra might become an issue for Mario, but first that definitely will not be. This is inch perfect. Oh, a bit too perfect there. Grabbing some curb. This is a second ahead of Kinnett. Here's the Urpard. This rider, I just hooked up. Even gets the hardest opponents. Well, with all these engine upgrades, it's just too much. It's just too good round here. And the circuit is normally being good round. There's Mario. Challenge for the victory here in the Red Bull Rookies Cup. It's 
decent last season as well in Moto3. As he takes to the dirt, he's just a second and a half there looking at. So that's a bit weird on the rear over that bump. You're going to power so and look at the yellow people around the circuit as well. That's absolutely crazy. Sit out the final corner, looking to the right hand side. Lots of Rossi fans that you expect around here with their chainsaws. With absolute madness. They're infected with that fever. There's Kinnett, Martin, DJ, and Antonio, top Italian, fourth ahead of Antonelli. Good start from Nicolo. Oh, and DJ and Antonio ahead of Martin as well. It's Dale Porter up to 17, battling with Livio Roy, having a good outing for once on his Avintia. You've got Ramirez battling with Mino, 4 10th. You've got the tie rider battling. Vichenko for 26, Zazaki and Amazer for 20th. That ended up happening throughout the whole of the field, apart from at the front. 1.8 seconds to Mayo and Kanep. You've got the Cassini battle happening behind between Martin and DJ and Antonio. Interesting to see who comes out on top of that. So a bit of grass cut in there for Mayo. Not the best way to go about things. And they are on the power so early through the right hander though. This time not grabbing too much curb and 2.4 seconds ahead of Kinnett. As you can see he's pushing the boundaries all over the place, the track limits. All it's doing is bringing speed to Mario. He's getting no warnings from the stewards here, taking some of that green stuff, the astro turf, the concrete on the outside. There's a good downhill through the right hander. Might be battling that rear on the final lap, but not in the second lap. It goes easy fat this time. Finish game three seconds ahead of Kinnett. Maybe in the race we thought the opposition would be closer to Mario. Obviously that is not the case. They're going to get on the power so early. So comfortable on this bike. Yeah, you don't want to be putting a top ride on a top bike like this. This combo is deadly. 56.2 dead. He is dead. A porch up to 16 ever tuba. 3.6 head of Kinnett, DJ Antonio and Martin. And Antone Bastini up to sit. Fantastic race from the Italian so far. After starting all the way down on the fifth row, wasn't it? Same for Dele Porch on the sit. Not doing as well as his teammate. Bastini always raced as well. There's Lloyd stop dropping down the orders. The CK Ramirez is dropping down as well. Sucky up to 19th now ahead of Lloyd. Got Masak and Yachenko, battling right at the back. Got McDonald battling himself basically at the front. Make sure he makes no mistakes after what happened in the on He was battling Kinnett and Martin. He should have won that race. But for once this season, made a mistake. Still got a podium. Well, he's right back on form here. Mugello. We just to see how he goes around Catalonia again. That should suit McDonald. Assen as well. Saxon ring. Seriously, rest of the season. You can see going McDonald's way. He was matching it in Thailand as well. In that Vintia. He saw he had a baseline the second half of last season to see how McDonald would go. He saw him winning the Red Bull ring. Winning Austria. Winning Australia. Run fair by and then win on the Sipan circuit, Malaysia. He's so far ahead, now the timing on right hand side is not saying anything for Mario, but they was saying second half of the season got a good base on how well they do, and he clawed himself up to sit in the championship on a bike which shouldn't have been fighting at the front. Now he's got a bike fighting at the front, and he's doing this. Could be curtains for the opposition in the second half of the season. So how well Mario did on a bike which shouldn't have been up there. Look at that poor that time, 57.6, 1.4 so in the previous lap, but he's still way ahead. The chasing pack. He's still got DJ and Tony Edo Martin as we go into the second half of the race. So yeah, this first half of the season being a dream, it could just be even more of a dream in the second half. What a nightmare for the opposition. What confidence it would give Mario heading into Moto2 next season. I think there's no questions that it'd be Stepping up, it's just 
depends who he's going to be stepping up to as he's 3.60 Kinect. He's going to second out of the race with barely any tyre wear as well. And look at those tyres, beautifully nicked after. He's flowing lines. Even with some slight grass cap cutting on occasion. And it's even been risky going all over these curves as well. The bike loving it at the moment is Kinect. Almost five seconds back. At least he's trying to hold on to the tail of Mario. Well, it might be like 10 seconds back by the end of this race, but this way he's curbing that. Again, Mario's just maybe protecting the lead as well, not pushing as hard after that, having that 56 lap. Doesn't need to. The speed he's got in hand on everyone else. He can just cruise to the finish. He's going for the far chicane, easy flat now. Ties up the temperature, everything up to temperature. He's going for the final corner. Amazing how early you can get on the power compared to the Avinti. You're kind of struggling to reach that bright biting point and get on the power. This bike's so easy. Get another 57, 57 too. Just setting into those 57 spares. Kinect and DJ Natano pulling away from Martin. He's gone to the penultimate lap. Very surprising to see for the Spaniard. Martin just not on it. This season, so is Kinect, to be fair. They both dropped back. He's been the Mario show. We thought maybe after what we saw in the Mon, they might battle him here. Not the case, as Misaki and Budoka down in 28. Tyre and Nikotin press in front of the home fans and Forchi, he's doing the opposite once again. He's going to be way out of the points to be battling for the wooden spoon again. Don't want to be doing that on home turf. Look at that. To the right inside again, going downhill. That's all. There's the first instance of the rear end starting to battle back. But it barely happened to Mario. Just a little joint. Got some white smoke as well. Someone being made the Pope or something around here. Pope Rossi, I think, for most of the fans around here. He is their deity, their god, to most of the fans here. And you got his academy, so many riders having their own races around here. Getting Bagnaya, Marini, Imoto too, Baldazari. And you've seen how many in Moto3 as well, lots of riders. We're going to the final corner. It's penultimate lap, cruising third gear. Not saying they overdid it with the yellow fever, but when you look to the right hand side and just see it engulfing in the middle of the circuit, it's quite a lot. It's another 57.6. He's not dropped lower than that mid 57 pace. It's like it's cruising off that 56. It's DJ Antonio for home pride, still stuck to the gearbox of Kinect. Trying to grab that second place from the Spaniard. As there's Bastini ahead of Bezecchi in the battle. Being the next best Italian. You also have Antonelli in there. It's a bit wide from McDonald, a bit rough on this final lap. Just having some fun now. Sachenko not getting the wooden spoon that belongs to Masaki now. You go downhill. Through the left and right, or right and left. That beautiful chicane. We got undulation, the mill, downhill, beautiful sweeping, high speed. Why can all chicanes be like that? As once again, he's gone into the turret, McDonald. Maybe he's saying to Rossi, can you invite me to the ranch? I want to do some flat pack, flat track riding. Some flat pack riding as well. I think you have to actually build your own bike there and see how far you can last on it. You go downhill. That'd be something nice to bring back as well. I know I only came for Vantano Rossi the game because that's his experience, that's what he does, but. Having some different type of circuits in in this. 
the riders to challenge themselves on. Because I've never turned off that track riding. That was good fun. So was Magello as well for McDonald's to go out the final corner and across the line. It's going to be a disappointing 58, is it, on the final lap? It is. Well, it doesn't matter. It's another victory. It's back on form. Five out of six. Six podiums out of six. And lots and lots of reward. Look at that bonus. He hadn't even been in those mid 57s. The only time someone did a fast lap at McDonald's on that final lap when he dropped to the 58 twos. As in the end, Kinnett won the battle for second just ahead of DJ and Antonio Martin at the only race in fourth. Bezeki grabbed the top five ahead of Antonelli. How did that happen when he's battling with Bezeki? Then we got Otto at eighth, Mino in ninth, Rodrigo in tenth. Has half of the top ten were Italians. Got a very strong feature, does Italy in Grand Prix motorcycle racing. Ramirez in 11th, Arbolona, another Italian in 12th. Corvell in 13th, Suzuki in 14th, Alonso Lopez beating De La Porta the final point. A couple of tenths, very disappointing from De La Porta. As you've got Arenas in 17th, Meza, Sasaki, Tubo in 20th, Loy out the top 20 in the end in 21st. McPhee, Binder, Nuard in Foggia, Sasaki, Budoga, the tie rider, and Yachenko. At the back, as in the Riders' Championship after a third of the season, McDonald leads by almost two race wins, 44 points ahead of Marty with Kinnett up to third ahead. With DJ and Antonio, just five points separate second to fourth. What about we have between the Cassini Riders and the Australia Glitzia of Kinnett? With Bezeki in fifth, a bit lonely, ahead of Antonetti, who's a bit lonely himself. Then you've got Bastini up to seventh ahead of Mino, then Della Porto in ninth, very disappointing. Season 4, the Leopard Riders. Then we've got Rigi Garan out the top 10. Otto up to 12th. Alonso Lopez down to 15th with 15 points. And then no will other changes apart from Loy. No longer the wooden spoon swap. He's there the Fogger, Tai Rider and Masaki. And then the breakdown. Surely McDonald's the first rider now. Come on. How is he not the first rider yet? As he goes to the breakdown. Look at all those are development points and the reputation for the team. That's the MotoGP crowd, has lots to cheer for. Rossi on the podium for Marcus in second and Dovi on a Ducati. Winning on home turf. And look at all the Italian podium in Moto2. Bagnaia ahead of the old man Pasini on Baldessari. And you had the San Marino rider winning in Moto3. Then the Red Bull rookies comes the Japanese rider. Uh, Tata and Ochu. Onchu, sorry. So does Mayo move on? Let's view the offers. Look at Moto2. He could be on the Italian team. As you scroll through... I believe it's the same offers from previously. Yeah, you've got Sam Lowe's and Ika as well. You've got Gardner Tech 3. It's no real Moto2 teams motivating Medora to step up. And then, of course, you can ride for anybody in Moto3. You see performance rise. But you go down. Even with the Lowe's teams, you have to work to be a first rider, which is a bit ridiculous. But yeah, he's going to stick with his team, I think. For Mayo. As let's go back. Are you happy with choice? Yes. So back on song is Mayo. Let's see if he can grab another victory next time out. Round Spain for the second time. And the second there, Barcelona. Catalonia, another happy hunting ground for Mayo. Can he grab his sixth victory of an unbelievable season? Sound for watching. We'll find out next time.